Yeah, because I think because we'll. Yeah, so yeah, you All can right, go ahead yeah, and, attack and hit guy. number nine. I'll get this. So go ahead and do your damage on orc number nine. Okay, that would be hand damage. And the great thing about basic D&D is all the monsters have, like, different hit points. So that's that's the cool thing about it. So, Dax, you actually kill orc number nine with your By hit myself. of six Mother. damage. Yeah. So that's that's good. Uh, you, I think you guys will probably take these guys out. It's looking good. Uh, I'm just gonna lick the blood off my. Uh, Wilbur, fist. go ahead and do your attack. Wilbur, did you? You didn't do an attack roll yet. So, wow. And uh, Wilbur, you hit with a 13. So you can go ahead and do damage. Oh wow! And you kill Orc number four with seven damage. He only had four hit points. So Maybe very nice, everybody. Friends. As the adrenaline subsides, you guys have successfully. Had your first combat. No thanks to Brutus. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll award you guys your 50 experience points because the orcs are worth uh, worth uh, 10 apiece. So look at that. Everybody got, uh, should have got, is it, did they divide it or? Let's see. Did more four divide it? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you got guys get eight experience. So, mm, yeah. Now, what what about our ten uh, percent bonus if we get? Yeah. That? So how do you guys want to do? How do you guys want to do uh, experience? Do you guys just want to kind of wait until we have a a couple of encounters down, or do you want to wait until the end of the night, or? I would say let's probably wait till the end of the night. That would probably be the best. I agree. So, yeah. That makes the most sense. Yeah. So why don't everybody go ahead and raise your experience? Go to your uh, uh, the tab that has experience, which I believe is the uh, notes tab, the bottom tab. Everybody just put ten experience on there, just to kind of, and then yeah, that that way it, it'll be nice and even, and then. At the end, we'll uh, go ahead and everybody can add your bonus in at the end. So, all right. So we're we're done with uh, our first combat. Very nice, everybody. Congratulations, you guys that. didn't die. Yeah. I go pat Brutus on the shoulder, and I'll be like, I remember my first battle too, friend. <laughs> and then I turn and walk away. <laughs> oh my goodness. Brutus, Brutus doesn't say anything, but he—you could tell—he's—he's kind of ticked off, a little bit ticked off. He, you, he almost, I, yeah. he almost hit himself with that first swing. And Brutus Close. has got a lot of pride, you know. He wants to, uh, you know, show off his battle prowess, but not this time. Holy cow! Not this time. <laughs> yeah. So are the. Uh, it's time to loot the bodies. Is there, I was gonna say, is there anything in the loot? Yeah, I want to loot this corpse right in front of me. I get my bolo back. <laughs> there is some treasure as everyone is searching the room and the orcs on the dais there was a there was a sack and in this sack there is a a beautiful set of chainmail it's a a full suit of chainmail and it's a it's of exquisite quality, for sure. So I That's will go guy. ahead and add but, the well, chain. Well, we That's a fat sack. It it is a fat sack. So let's let's add the chainmail. There we go. We'll add that to the party sheet. If I can keep the damn thing open. There we go. All right, so you guys have a, a another pretty nice looking item there to go along with your mace. So what are you guys uh what are you guys doing now that you guys are getting some some loot and all that other good well, stuff? What were these guys doing over in the jammed in the corner? Were they cooking something? I'm gonna just invest oak. Okay. Sure, yeah, they have a sure. Why don't you tell us what they're cooking in their little fire pit that they had oh, going over there? All uh, I can see is eyeballs, Dave. 
tons and tons of rad eyeball. Eyeball you want soup? Some? That's good. I like that. Yeah. Orcs would like, I'm sure orcs would eat rats, yeah. rat eyeball soup. Yeah. Some I people just, eat, yeah, eat squirrel, squirrel brain soup. Why wouldn't orcs eat rat eye soup? So, yeah. Plus, there's irises for everybody. Ah. <laughs> Other than that, there's really nothing of any value in here. No crossbows. Aww. No, no crossbow plus fives or nothing like that. They they were all armed with uh, spears. Yes, they all had spears. So if you want to, if anybody wants a spear, you can add a spear to your character sheet from the. Items, you can just do a search for spear, no problem. Hey, you have a spare spear now. Spare spear, yeah. Yeah, the, and you guys would have probably, you know, figured that those beautiful banners, well, the once beautiful banners on the on the north wall were probably worth some money back then when they were nice, but seeing that they're kind of dilapidated and stuff, they're really not worth anything. Plus, now. there's some orc blood on them. Yeah, because you guys splattered the orc blood all over him, yeah. Anything behind the banners. So uh, Brutus will go and investigate nice. the wall. Nice. Give me and, a you know, D6 roll. Down. Yeah, give me a D6 roll while you're searching the, the banners above the, the dais. No, you don't find I anything special. Have a good roll. Yeah. I a roll that time. Mm, yeah. Nothing, nothing uh, of any importance or any significance or nothing like that. I'm going to jump on this pew and just stand on the table in a superhero pose for a couple of minutes. With your cloak <laughs> flowing in the wind behind you as it's kind of flopping? Yeah, it'll be awesome. I threw a spear at him. I was going to say, somebody <laughs> secretly throwing rocks at him. <laughs> Roll your attacks. <laughs> I'll freaking ninja that shit away, man. <laughs> you saw that bolo roll. You don't oh, want me to strike. good. And especially uh, you get a, especially you get a twenty, <laughs> skiver attacks in his light crossbow. <laughs> that would probably was, you'd, uh, almost hit. I mean, Half-heartedly, I, I, I launch a missile at the weird monk. Yeah, just zings passes. Yeah, I, I won't even move because you're such a terrible shot. <laughs> Dax, Dax, aren't you the aren't you the medic of the of the group here? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you need some healing? Yeah. Yeah, Perhaps yeah, you'd like to come down and mend my wounds, friend, instead of continuing with your foolish superhero pose. My my puncture wound in my wiener needs attend attention. Yeah, there's a hole <laughs> in the end of it. <laughs> I'm leaving the room. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me uh, roll for healing. I don't remember how to do it, but just oh, click your macro. It's yeah, just click your macro. And it's lower than the target number, so no, that's successful. That's what you want to roll for skill checks in basic D and D. You want to? It's based off of your uh, ability score, which I believe is wisdom. So you want to roll your wisdom score or lower, and you were successful. So you can now restore one d three hit points, which is a d six, and we'll just divide it. Okay, d six uh, uh -huh. plus. Do I? Yeah. So nice. you'll get back a total of three. So you are no longer wounded. You could just take your three wounds and you're good to go. So I'll just uh, wrap you up, put a little aloe vera in there, and I'll probably spit in there just for, you know, because I'm so awesome. My <laughs> saliva is like a salve. <laughs> I like the Lotion and spit. My favorite feels like back at the uh, the the monastery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the healing roll. Roll a 20 and you do th three points, 1d3 damage. That's that's nice. So, All right, adventurers, where to? you got plenty of different uh, places that you can go to in this place called Q. You can go to the west. You can go back to the north. You can go to the east. you got all kinds of different ways as you're mapping, who's who's doing the mapping? By the way, I thought Fantasy Grounds was doing the mapping. <laughs> no, I mean just f who's. Usually... I say Skeever will do it. Okay, Skeever yeah, will do it. yeah. 
All right, so well, let's see. Did he see. have the map to begin with? I, I had the map to begin with. Not the internal workings of the... Q, you know. Q. It wasn't the map of Q. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perhaps Brutus should lead the uh, the party. Can, maybe he'll get some action in. Yeah, that that's... I've been doing that. Uh, did that last time? Of course. Follow me. We... Yeah. All right. So I want to come up to this corner and, and peer around it. Carefully. Sure. It's a very long, straight corridor. And it's probably about 60, 75 feet or so. And then it winds around. And uh, actually, it, it does this several times. So it, it's sort of like a, like a maze that just keeps making smaller and smaller loops. So as soon as the lighting pops off, you guys find a door. You guys also keep going around in a circle until you guys come to this center room. And, you know, as you guys are making your way, you know, I'm doing roles as well. If you need to, you know, if your perception catches anything. So, but yeah, as you guys work your way around this room and you get towards the center, uh, it is a dead end because, you know, you guys keep turning in the corridors keeps winding until you see this you know very large room that's uh at the end all of the walls in this cheese. maze go ahead and roll for cheese you can do that so the walls are all unfinished uh so it looks like this is probably going to be something but it doesn't look like it was finished in the long run but as you guys come around this last corner there is a sort of like a like a raised block up about about three and a half, four feet. And on this block, there is a, basically it looks like a, like a, like a scroll tube. And it's actually, it's, it's sitting in a hand. So this hand is kind of like sitting like this on the top of this, you know, three and a half, four foot tall stone block. And there's a hand, and then there's a scroll tube that is inside of the hand. Oh. Wait, wait. Before anybody does anything, you check for traps. Somebody needs to check to see if there's any I can find traps. Let me take a gander. I'm going to yeah, move I mean, up close to the statue. If you guys all want to work together on it, that's, yeah. uh, that's fine with me. Yeah, so, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah, Skeever will kind of give it an eyeball sideways. I'll move around the corner. The <laughs> give it an eyeball sideways? I like that. Whoops, that was the wrong thing, wasn't it? Fine traps? No, that was the wrong that was the right roll. <laughs> wow, you got five percent, you did it. Ten uh, percent chance. Ten percent. Yes. Oh. Oh, it was clutch, just like uh, just like Bella did last week. She was gonna lose three fingers, and she was successful. With, I think three percent. So, yes, Skeever. Just as Dax is starting to kind of barely lift up the scroll a little bit, you do find a trap, and it has a a piece of cord on the bottom of the scroll sitting in the hand so obviously you know you're able to say okay wow so if you pull this thing up something's going to happen and then and you look around the room and basically in the center of the room going this way because the the block is about in the middle of these blocks so right in the the corner of basically where wilbur's token is that's where the the block is so going from right to left or east to west there is a like a crevice in the floor and a crevice in the ceiling so you're thinking that something is probably going to swing through that groove everybody back up like a blade or something like that yeah, a swinging blade trap yeah so I've seen these before, back in Nam. 
You've seen his back and <laughs> So why don't you go ahead and do a uh, remove traps roll now? This is going to be the good roll right here. So, yeah, so why don't you give me a give me a dexterity attribute roll as a swinging and what's your what's your 18. dexterity 18 okay wow so yeah that's that's good i'm gonna work that kind of like a skill check so we'll just take the 14 and not worry about the the plus three so yeah that's so you're able to kind of you you're expecting this but the the blade comes down and, and just swings and cuts the hand cuts the block and you tumble out of the way successfully uh, and give me a 50 50 percent we'll give it a 50 50 chance so give me a percentage roll skeever if the scroll case gets destroyed from the blade so okay. one to 50 destroyed 51 higher it's uh successful so it's destroyed but as you look there were two scrolls one scroll was destroyed there is still one other scroll in the tube. Cool. It's not all lost, guys. <laughs> no. no. Just a good scroll. There's yeah, just the, the wish scroll. Unfortunately, the wish yeah. scroll. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's just a note. The spell's yeah. gone. We just well, I know that you guys both you have both a cleric and a magic user in a party, and this scroll, and I I rolled this, uh, is a scroll of cure light wounds. So, uh, Gary, you can go ahead and and take that scroll of cure light wounds. There were two of them. I rolled two of them, but one of them was destroyed. So you can take that scroll of cure light wounds. And you can drag that from the party sheet onto the inventory tab of your of your character sheet. That's which is really weird because there's very very rarely that you actually uh, get light damage. <laughs> <laughs> your light wounds. So you said the block part of it got broken. It did. Just ba- the statue in the hand. Yeah, the basically statue. just yeah, it was destroyed. Yeah, sure was. Okay, so I'm gonna go pick up one of the pieces and pop it in my mouth she's a uh mm-hmm. she's one of those people that eat everything that they <laughs> weird man weird yeah you guys are looking at her like what in the hell are you doing that for <laughs> that's, that's bad for your bowels <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it's not bad food. for your bowels it's too Freya. <laughs> all right okay. so which way now, everybody? Which way? You got lots of ways. And if you guys just want to move your token to where you want to start back up, uh, we can do that. Yeah, let's let's head back over to the main corridor and uh, check out the other side. Sure. Uh, so it looks like you guys are systematically kind of working your way around. I love watching all the tokens just. <laughs> all right. So you guys going east, going north. Oh, east. Let's go east. Mm-hmm. Again, I'll, I'll get up to this corner and, and peek around. Sure. You peek around and it's a long corridor that goes back to the south. And we'll follow it down. Okay. It goes for for quite a ways, and then it comes to a basically comes to a four way, and I'll open up everything on the four way for you guys as well. And just think, when we move over to Unity, eventually we'll have individual token line of sight also, which will be which will be nice. So the the corridor. Uh, so how long do torches continue to burn? Is it eight hours or? They're them everlasting long torches. 
Are they the everlasting torches, the glow sticks I, from fourth edition? I also have like a lantern with the lantern oil. FYI. If you need it, all right. Yeah. But I was wondering before it we burns, get this corridor. Okay, <laughs> one hour. I was wondering the the sure. I don't know. Is this to scale? Is there like two people can be? Yes, I was going to mention that. No, yeah, you can like zero and Dax. You guys are okay. Uh, it each corridor is ten foot wide, so you can fit two two people abreast, basically. Man, that's one big booby. <laughs> see what you did there again. <laughs> you see it? You see it? Uh, so you guys are at a, at an inter basically at a at a four way. Looks like Brutus is working his way to the east. Lead the way unless you guys uh, tell me not to go somewhere. So I'll, I'll continue marching on. I'll just follow TV. you. I mean, you seem to know what you're doing, although you you're did kind of get us into trouble. <laughs> Got you in trouble with those orcs that you actually really handled nicely. So uh, as you're as you're continuing to move, there is a another corridor that is going to the north, and the corridor also continues to the east. And when you're looking to the east, you can see a couple of wooden doors also, one to the well, north, one to the here, south. Guys. Sound wise and and everything wise on the cave, everything looks or the uh, dungeon, everything looks about the same, right? Nothing. Yeah, nicely finished walls. Every once in a while, you may hear, you know, something echo way off into the distance, but nothing. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm just trying to ascertain whether we're going down, uh, you know, descending it deeper into the earth, or no, whether you're, this is no, this is still pretty much re relatively flat there's no you know ramps that are going up or going down but no you haven't Skeever seen actually like turns that. around and looks over his shoulder and he said did you say ascertain <laughs> yeah that's a that's a, one of those big boy words we learned at the monastery that's one of the, <laughs> the five <laughs> gold words so at the end of this east corridor you see that there is a like a sort of like maybe a, a cloth barrier. Oh, that's more interesting than a door. Look ahead, guys. Look. I'll move up to that. I can light it on fire. No, 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 not yet. Maybe later. Yeah, let's destroy as much possible. <laughs> light it on fire. <laughs> I could probably make a shirt out of it. Roll for Taylor. Did you learn that at the monastery? Tell me more about this monastery, Dax. Yeah, we. Oh, man, I am so glad you asked. I had the impression <laughs> last time that nobody wanted to hear any monastery stories. That was the correct impression. <laughs> okay, buddy. Just keep it shut. Not quite sure what you mean by last time, Dax. Uh, that was. Just I mean, earlier hour. today. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> So I'm going to use my, my uh, two-handed sword to kind of push into the, the cloth and see if I can move it aside. I assume it's like a curtain. Yeah, roll yeah. cloth initiative. <laughs> that is part seven of the initiative order. So, yeah, as <laughs> you... <laughs> as you, one and kills them enough. <laughs> you find the, the, the break in, in the cloth and, and you open this up and it and it looks like some type of quarters uh, inside. I mean, it's it's fairly Spartan and simple, but it's definitely someone's personal quarters, and it's not too fancy. And there's, you know, the the cloth basically makes a an oddly shaped room, and everything is in really good shape here. There's no, there's not a lot of dust. Um, it's it's definitely a different type of chamber that you've been in. So, you know, there's also you know you kind of look behind the the curtain, and it's a really nice sort of like furnace, like a uh, I would say of a, a finished fir wood 
that kind of lines the walls. So the, the wood's in good shape, and there are narrow planks that go from floor to ceiling. Like I said, it's it's nothing, nothing fancy. And then in each of the the four curved corners, there's a a different wall hanging in each corner, and they're basically six foot wide, eight foot high tapestries, and they're beautiful tapestries. So they're definitely worth quite a bit. You're you're thinking, wow, these are they're probably a hundred, maybe a hundred to 150 gold per per tapestry because of the the workmanship that's gone gone, you know, what are they with up? making these. That's a good question because the as you guys are looking at the tapestries, the first one is a dragon being slain by a group of warriors with one of these warriors. Uh, standing prominently at the front of the group, thrusting like the sword into the dragon's neck, giving the killing blow, and blood kind of squirting up out of the out of the neck. So yeah, that's that's basically what the. Yeah, I want this one in my. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I, I've read this story before. Hmm. Huh? The monastery. At the, the, at the story. <laughs> oh my gosh! I hope you I hope that works. Kill you. What kind of tattoo are you gonna get? <laughs> we'll have to wait till we play. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys might not. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know about that, but uh, my it, it, back at the monastery, one of the things that we do after we do something that's life changing, like leaving the monastery or maybe meeting up with you losers, or our first battle, what we what we normally do is we'll uh, use our losers. home tattoo kits, and we'll give ourselves a little tattoo. So it's like it tells a story on from your body. And then that way when we when we return to the monastery after however long that you've, you've been away, uh, even if your tongue is cut out, everybody can basically understand all your – all the the pain and heartache and everything that you went through because it'll it'll be all over your body so my my hope is that i totally get t covered in tattoos and they're not of just you know me and you guys running from stuff um, <laughs> or Question. tattoos of you spitting on other people's wieners you know? <laughs> do, you, uh, do you monks have a high instance of returning to the monastery uh there's, Samsung? There's, there's just been the one guy and uh he just had a tattoo of him doing some farm work and then meeting a really hot look at redhead so you know i'm 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 ready to just basically i'm gonna tell all kinds of stories that's why i'm that's why i'm doing all this you know, this is just wandering around, absolutely loving, uh, learning about the world. This and this my first... sounds more and more like a prison, right? Right. <laughs> well, I mean, you have like a high Notion recidivism rate. Day. You go back there. Or an asylum. <laughs> or an asylum. Could be, yeah. I don't know. Usually, well, there is a an asylum in cats. a lot of the old, you know, medical asylums that are in all of the old gothic cathedrals and stuff you know uh they're called dungeons by the way <laughs> so yeah i bet you it was probably an asylum so uh the other three tapestries that are six foot wide and eight feet high there's also one of a great battle which is the battle's going on in a mountain pass with uh, a small band of fighters and standing in the forefront of this band of fighters is a great wizard and a great fighter, like kind of leading this uh, battle, and it looks like they're fighting Northmen. Is it the same kind of people in each tapestry, or are there different people? It, I mean, can it I is, see yeah. some similarity? It's the same two prominent figures, the fighter and the wizard. You know, like the oh, fire was throwing. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so yeah. this is pro this could be one of the chambers of of one of these guys because in the dragon, uh, 
in the tapestry of the dragon, the fighter is stabbing the dragon in the neck. And then in the battle of the, you know, in the mountain pass, the wizard is kind of leading the way, you know, against the Northmen. And then so the, you're saying that there's absolutely no chance of me finding a tapestry of somebody sticking a dagger in somebody's back and pilfering <laughs> a few coins from their pouch? <laughs> you can see their hand kind of slide of handing in, inside of the uh, the pouch. No, not on in, these tapestries. In the distance, while they're stabbing the while they're stabbing the dragon, you see just a hand in the corner, like grabbing for the guy's wallet. <laughs> <laughs> for the guy's wallet it's got a chain wallet so there's a, a, a third tapestry which is a warrior and a maiden on horseback against a backdrop of mountains they're holding hands they have joyous expressions etc and then the last tapestry what was that kumbaya ah, yeah, yeah it looks We're like you met somebody yeah. after the dragon and then in the last tapestry, there is a depiction of uh, both the hero and the wizard uh, joining joining in a uh, basically a firm handshake on a uh, deserted hilltop, which you guys are oh looking God, at it guys. and you're thinking, oh, my this goodness, this is the same hilltop that we just climbed to get inside of this place. Oh my goodness. This must be this must be Rogan and the other dude. If I look at these pet tapestries and they're in a certain order, I've pretty much sussed out what happened. So first this guy had a girlfriend and then he met this wizard and they shook hands because he was gonna turn him into a dragon. And then they had a giant battle with the Northmen, and then I guess the woman became a dragon and they had to finally kill her. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I've figured out. That's the story that this that these uh these are telling. That makes that's a lot a, of sense. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. yeah because there are. Talking, go ahead. I go open the door. <laughs> <laughs> you you. So I want to. I just leave. Um, huh? I want to search behind these tapestries. And sure. Then of course, get them off the wall, roll them up. They will be part of our loot. I mean, how but, how heavy are these? Tapestries? Oh, these yeah, these things are heavy. The, yeah, they're they're going to need to be carried. So yeah, you could you could definitely prepare them, but if you're going to be carrying them around the dungeon everywhere you go.